Well, just like every student is different, every school is different as well. And there's an initiative here in Maryland that goes along with the blueprint. It's community schools in Anne Arundel County really putting their best foot forward. Joining us right now is a Doc Carter and Dr. Shannon Pugh from Anne Arundel County. Good to see you both. Thank you. A lot of terms are thrown around with schools, charter schools and community schools and magnet schools. What sets this blueprint community school uh, idea apart from the rest? So for uh, under Blueprint, we've created uh, community schools. And so in a community school, it's really a focus about wraparound services for students and families. And so we normally think about what happens inside the classroom with our students, the English, the math, all of that. But in community schools, we have some funding and some energies to make sure that we're taking care of students and families outside the classroom uh, so they can come to class with all the energies and supports so they need to be academically successful. Sure, and the idea is that each school is a level, level playing field. That if one school is able to do something, the other should do the same, and these are taxpayer dollars to assure that. Absolutely, so we're, we're trying to remove barriers so that there's equitable access and opportunity for students so they can be successful. Some of those barriers, I mean, go to the heart of not just the student, but the person as well. And we talk about things like uh, physical and mental health care making sure that when a kid comes in, that they're ready and capable of doing their work. Talk to me about some of the things that go into making this an even playing field. Yeah, so under the blueprint, uh, in every school that's a community school, we have to have a full-time medical professional. So in Anne Arundel County, that's our full-time nurses. And so they are there throughout the entire day, but also during after-school programming with our students. And then for uh, some of that mental care, we're able to uh, use uh, funding. We have 13, I believe, full-time social workers serving our community schools. Uh, this year, we have full-time psychologists, full-time uh, behavioral interventionists who are there so when children do need those supports uh, that relates to social emotional or, or trauma that they are there we're not waiting for somebody from another office to come over so having those supports right there for our kids so they can be successful in the name of the program really says it I mean it really is a community school you're hoping that the doctor down the street and the guy who has this corner store that they all become part of the school yeah, so that's one of the things that's most exciting to me about being connected with community schools is that it's very personalized to what that community actually needs. So we do extensive needs assessments and that's what we connect the school to, where there are things that are missing, we connect with those resources outside of the direct community to make sure that they also have access to what they need. You were a principal at one of the schools, and just to give folks the numbers, you were at 15 schools at one point, now you're up to 38. So I guess you've seen success stories at this point. What are some of the successes that come from uh, seeing a community school through for a few years? I'm so glad you asked that question because I, was, I just left Brockbridge Elementary School okay. as a principal and we enjoyed uh, so much from becoming a community school. We had uh, the opportunity to re-engage the students and their parents and the, the entire community to the school. Coming back after COVID, sure. it was a little bit hard to, to, to make people feel welcome again in the school. And so our school suffered with attendance um, issues and we had health issues, ongoing health issues. But with this intentional uh, effort and programming that we put in place, our attendance got better, our students and our families became re-engaged with school. And so it was a, a change in feeling, but also a change in results. And we saw that across our district. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. What, what is the difference when you have a school, when everyone buys in, when it's not just mom and dad who show up for PTA, but also someone that says, it looks like you guys could use a computer or could use, I mean, I think that's life changing for it. It is absolutely life changing. One of uh, our superintendent, Dr. Bedell, uh, we're focused on belong, grow, succeed. And we, our first piece is to bring people back into the community, no matter which school it is. And, and so uh, they're in there, but there are also things that not only computers, but you'll have people who are like, oh, can we have a job fair mm. at your school? And so now we're engaging family members who might be interested in uh, a job opportunity or, or you know, we work with the community college on things like yeah. English language classes. So all those things about different levels of government, different levels of our community, whether they're a business person or whomever coming in and providing opportunities, not only for our children, but for our family, so it's a win-win all around. About 30 seconds left. If there's someone in a community and they know that there's a community school down the street, what can they do to sort of make that contact? Absolutely. Every community school in Maryland, no matter where you are, yeah. uh, has a, a community school coordinator. In Ann Riddle, we call them program managers. Just reach out to that school and connect with that individual, and their job is to, is to find a way to make your power part of the power of the school. Monday, we start all over again. <laughs> Good to see you both. Thank, Thank you. you so much.